Hey, what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to cover the installation process for Portainer, and then we're going to also set up one Docker container within this environment. Now, the reason why I'm covering this is because recently I had a shift in the home lab, and what I'm doing now is I'm going to be using Portainer to manage my Docker's containers, mainly for stacks, uh, kind of like an infrastructure as code. So what that's going to allow us to do is if I ever have to tear down any of my Docker or, you know, Docker containers or move over to a different server, I can go ahead and spin up my portainer since I already have everything over here in the home lab, which I'm still spinning up. And like, for instance, for our dashy dashboard, we could go ahead and we could make a stack from this YAML file and then that will build out our infrastructure. So that's the main thing I'm going forward is I'm going to be using this as infrastructure as code, essentially to keep everything in line. It also makes it easy to manage our Docker containers, our volumes, and also create backups of everything. So if we have ever, ever have to migrate or have a disaster, we have a quick way to get back up and running. First, we're going to go ahead and SSH into the box where we want to install Portainer. In this case, I'm running on my Hyper-V. I have a new environment or a new virtual machine, and that's going to be for our home lab testing. Now, most recently, I'm going to create a, so I have a home assistant testing and a home lab testing. And in there, I'm going to create checkpoints. So for my videos, I don't keep breaking my own home lab. I'm just trying to get better with documenting and keeping a test environment and kind of like a production environment. So that's what we're going to be today. So we're going to go ahead and SSH into that. I already had set up the, I already set up the SSH and everything and everything's configured with my public and private key pair. So we are now on our Linux machine, but just like everything, you're going to want to go ahead and update and upgrade your packages and your repositories. So go ahead and just run sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade with the dash y option. And that's going to update our repositories and upgrade all of our packages should be pretty quick as I did just run this a few days ago. All right. So once that is complete, you're going to want to head over. I'm going to provide all the instructions here, but if you head over to the Ubuntu, if you just go to Google and then uh, search how to install Docker engine, you'll get these same instructions and you could copy and paste it. I'll paste it in the description below as well. But what you're going to do next is you're going to go ahead and um, install CA certificates and curl. So you're going to do sudo apt get install CA certificates and curl. Most often that's already going to be installed. Then we're going to do, we're going to pretty much set up our GPG key. And um, so what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that any packages that we install from the app repository, um, which is what we're going to be setting up, it's going to make sure that the package is signed by that key, verifying that it is a official Docker package, and we're not downloading anything that may be malicious. So that's pretty much what we did here. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add that repository. So I'm just going to go ahead again, I'm going to copy and paste it because it is pretty long. And I'll kind of walk you through exactly what's going on. So here we're going to go ahead and echo. And then we're going to write so we're pretty much writing this um, to our sources list the docker that list. And uh, what we're going to be doing is we got deb, and then we're going to grab the architecture. Uh, so we can make sure that we get the right one for our flavor of Ubuntu, which is also going to be down here, the Ubuntu code name, uh, which is in the version underscore code name environment variable. And then up here at the top with the sign by uh, up here at the top with the sign by, we're going to make sure that we are, again, verifying the sign key. If it is not signed by this key, we will not be able to download it. And then uh, that's pretty much it. So again, this will be in the description below and you can go ahead and copy and paste it or just, just copy what I'm talking about here. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll just, we can just verify. So I went ahead and I, so I went ahead and I ran cat against that file and we were able to see that we had wrote that to that file. And now again, you want to run sudo apt get up. So now we are pulling in from that Docker repository and we know that apt is going to be using it correctly. And at this point, all we got to do is just go ahead and install the various packages from that repository. So we're going to run sudo apt get install uh, docker dash ce docker dash ce dash cli uh, container d.io build x plugin and also the docker compose plugin. 
this is not necessary for if you were just to install Docker. Um, but in this case, I do like using Docker Compose. So I'm going to be downloading this plugin as that is what we're going to be using today for installing Portainer. Go ahead and install those packages. Once that is complete, go ahead and run sudo docker run hello world. And that's just going to verify that Docker is working correctly. And what that's going to do is going to say unable to find image because we don't have anything locally. So it's going to go ahead and pull in that hello world image from Docker Hub. Pull complete. It's got the SHA with a digest of that image. Uh, and it's going to say downloaded newer image. And then here you can see that we have our hello from Docker. So that's confirming that the Docker installation has been completed. So next, we could just verify that we also have the Docker Compose. So just run Docker Compose version, and we can see that we have Docker Compose version v2.33.1. Next, we're going to go ahead and copy over or create our Docker Compose file. And what I am going to do is going to use Visual Studio Code. So we go ahead and just SSH into the machine and just use it this way and edit it through Visual Studio Code instead of doing it through the terminal. Now, I think this is probably the most preferred way, at least for me. I love using Visual Studio Code for anything now as far as code or um, any kind of development work or even just working on any kind of, you know, text files on a machine on a Linux machine. This is what I'll do. So down here at the bottom left, go ahead and do connect to host. Then you're going to specify that that host. So username at IP address. And it's going to ask the platform. Since I already have it configured, I don't need to specify a password or a key or anything like that. And then we're going to do open folder. And then we'll just do home. All right, so now we're on our home. So what we could do is we could right click and we could click on new folder and we'll do just do portainer inside of portainer we'll create a new file and we'll do portainer or sorry we'll do docker docker compose.yaml and then inside of that docker compose.yaml file you want to obviously paste this uh, which i will put in our we'll put on the github uh, and it will be posted down in the description below uh, so here's going to be the Docker Compose file. So we have version 3. The services that we're going to be running is going to be Portainer. The image is going to be Portainer, and it's going to be the latest tag. We're going to specify the port 9443, which is going to be on the external and then internal. We have some volumes. Um, two things to note here. So Portainer data. Uh, this is going to be a persistent volume that we would use to store information. So if we ever tear down this Docker container, we could go ahead and still reference this volume in another Docker container, and we could have that same environment up and running. The next one is important if you are going to be running, or you have to do that within Portainer because Docker, because Portainer needs to reference or to use the Docker commands. And to do that, it will need this volume assigned here. And that's pretty much it there. And then you're just going to down here at the bottom, you're going to name that volume pertainer underscore data. So now if we go ahead and we save that file, head over back to our terminal, you'll see that if we do ls, we have our pertainer. We're going to change directories into that directory. And we're going to do docker compose up dash d. And that's going to bring up all the services. And it's going to do it in, in a detached fashion. So we're not in an interactive mode. Here, we're going to want to make sure we do sudo. So we'll just do sudo docker compose up dash d and as you can see it's going to go ahead and pull in that latest image for portainer and then it's going to go ahead and finish out that installation so once that is complete if we list out um, or if we get the ip address of this machine we're going to get 192.168.200 and since we know the port is going to be 9443 let's open up the browser and head over to that now and as you can see, 192.168.1.200, port 9443. Make sure you specify HTTPS, otherwise it'll give you a warning. And you're going to get to that new Portainer installation screen. Go ahead and type in whatever you would like and create user. And now we are into Portainer. If you click on the home screen, you will get to the environments. Go ahead and click on the local environment. And as you can see, we will have the different options available to us. Here you have your stacks, 
your images, your volumes, and your containers. Now, if you were to click into this, you're going to see that the stack is limited and it's related to Portainer because this Docker Compose file was already created before or not within Portainer, which is pretty cool. Um, this is also something that you can go ahead and change later on and you can bring it over and it's giving it control to port or give it control from Portainer, which is something that we're going to cover in a future video. Uh, if you go to images, you're going to see that we're going to have the hello world, which we had done during the initial steps of this video. And then we're going to have the Portainer image that we had just pulled down. And as you would guess, if you go to the images, or I'm sorry, containers, you're going to see that we have our Portainer uh, container running. And then obviously you could assume that we have our Portainer data volume. We're going to dive deeper in another video, but just to kind of show you how it could be used. So if we go into containers, we go ahead and click on add container. And we're going to just say test container. We're going to use Docker Hub Anonymous, which does just give a little restriction saying that you can only pull 100 pulls every six hours. Nothing to worry about here. Image. Image is required. So what's pretty cool here is you could just click on search image in Docker Hub and it'll bring you over to Docker Hub website. And then you can go ahead and search it. So let's just do Alpine. And if we just click on it, you could get the different information and then the tags. So we're just going to do Alpine latest. So if we go in here, we can just do Alpine latest, always pull the image, and we're going to pretty much leave, the, leave this de default for now. Down here at the bottom, you have additional or advanced container settings. So you have the command option, the entry point, the working directory, console. We're going to leave it none. All this is great. Then you have your volumes, similar to what we talked about when we created that Docker Compose file. We have network environment variables, labels, restart policy, runtime resources, and capabilities. Now, all we're going to do here is we're going to go back and to the very top up here, and you're going to click on deploy the container. Container successfully created. Now, the cool thing is if we go in here, we could get a different things. So we have logs, which is cool. Um, so right now, we don't have anything really that would be matching any of these filters, but this is a way to see the logs, and we go ahead and we can download them. Go ahead and you could you know set filters um obviously we don't really need to look into anything it's just something that we could look at we got inspect which just give us the information about the docker container itself um so this is very good to have especially like with network settings and stuff like that sometimes you'll run into some issues if you're troubleshooting network this would be good easy thing to reference if stats pretty straightforward and then uh cool thing is here you have console and how this is uh you're realizing what i did so we had selected an alpine image and in doing so the image would just start up no problem but then it would die off it's only because it was just a um a minimal container and it didn't have any function that we had set for it so what i did was if i went back i went back into to go back into containers we went into here and what i did was i did duplicate and edit and when you click on that, I went down to interactive and that'll let us get into it uh, just to show you the console portion of it, which is not really important, but just to kind of give you an idea how useful this could be. So after saying interactive, go ahead and redeploy that container. It'll ask if you want to replace it since it has the same name. Go back into containers. As you can see, it is still running. Click on test container and then click on console. Um, bin bash is the command that we want to run. And then as you can see, it's going to say, uh, let's go back. We're going to want to do bin sh and now you can see that we have full terminal access within portainer for our alpine image that we had just spun up that's going to close out today's video so in this video we covered the installation process of portainer and we had spun up a alpine image uh, pulled it directly from Docker Hub and showed you kind of the different options that are available to us within portainer now going forward in the next video that i'm going to cover related to portainer is we're going to cover stacks and what that is going to be essentially is infrastructure as code allowing us to make any changes to our yaml file here on gitlab and then any changes that are going to be made here is going to rebuild this stack and then we're going to have a new um portainer image as i discussed in the beginning of this video so that's going to close out today's video i hope you were able to take something away and as always never stop learning